We are celebrating Carmen and her 38 years here at Local 4. During that time, she not only earned the trust of viewers like you, she kept it. Now, she only rarely weighed in on issues, but as we look back on her career, there is one moment that stands out for many when she spoke out about former mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. Um, a lot of strategic meetings are in my home or in her home, so yes, I've been there several times. It was not Detroit's finest moment. A wash in a sea of incriminating text messages, the city's young mayor was drowning in tawdry headlines. He had had an affair with his chief of staff, but worse, they had lied about it under oath. And it seemed an eight and a half million dollar settlement had been paid out to keep it quiet. I truly apologize to each and every one of you individually and to the whole city. Carmen seldom waded into editorial waters, perhaps because she only occasionally offered them. Her opinions carried a lot of weight when she aired them. Around here, we call them Carmentaries, and the most memorable Carmentary of all came the night of August 7th, 2008. This is like a bad movie that just won't end. We can't take it anymore, and neither can you, Mr. Mayor. The fact that she had the guts to you know, raise her hand and say, you know, not ready for prime time anymore was huge. Because of the trust that people have had in her over the years, they knew that when Carmen Harlan got upset about it, oh, it's going down, it's really serious. Carmen had seen enough, and she told the once so promising mayor, Kwame Kilpatrick, to step aside. We need you to go home. Make things right in your home. We need you to resign immediately. She had had enough and she spoke for many when she spoke that night and I think it was one of the most powerful moments I can remember in my lifetime. It was about a month later as part of a plea deal Kilpatrick resigned and went to jail. Well, it sort of reminded me of um, the story back in in the 60s when Lyndon Johnson when Walter Cronkite came back from Vietnam and said it's time for us to get out and Lyndon Johnson said, oh, I've lost Walter Cronkite, I've lost the country. Well, if you've lost Carmen Harlan, <laughs> you've lost Detroit. <laughs> what a great analogy. That says it all. <laughs> it really does. Do you remember, you do you remember much about those you know, I weeks? definitely. I, you know I heard about it, certainly from uh, my family. Sure people in the community. The New York Times New mentioned York it. Times mentioned <laughs> yes. it. And also, uh, Kilpatrick wrote it in, in, in a memoir. Right, right, right. Right. And he called mm -hmm. me a seasoned reporter. But it was really more about the city and what was in the best interest sure. of the city. Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. targeted so much at him, but it was what was best for Detroit so right. that we could move forward. Well, everybody we else was feeling it, and you just, you know, you said it. I just so. put it into words. You, you absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> and not the first Can I go one. now? Well, you can go. <laughs> I know, is it, how much of this adulation I can you handle? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, I hope four more Just days. A few more days. Anyway. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> more coming up as we continue our celebration of Carmen.